Uh, my name is Warren Johnson. I'm here representing SolarNet 1 or AS32639. I'd like to start off by saying I'm a fifth generation Florida native. So the way that my family got into networking is that my grandfather got tired of the farm life. He decided to go to the military. That's how he started his career in tech. And from there, I was homeschooled my whole life by my mother and father. And they made a point to make sure I repaired every single electronic that I ever broke. So port shoved in the wrong way, crack screen, whatever it may have been. At the age of 14, I started dual enrolling at Daytona State College. At the age of 17, I had my Associate of Arts. And from there, I decided, what is it I'm going to do? I mean, I had a various array of interests, one being art, which was my original interest, but then I'm like, okay, my father and mother taught me this, I'm going to go into electrical engineering. And now here I am, 18, I'm a fourth year engineering student at Daytona State College. Another thing I got from homeschooling is I am an environmentalist. I was taught about global warming deforestation, pollution, and endangered species. That particularly stuck with me. But right now, with those two things combined, my focus is renewable energy, energy storage, and energy efficiency. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> and so I wanted to talk about, to start with, uh, young people's interest in STEM. There's a pretty clear disconnect between uh, previous generations and Gen Z. My theory is that previous generations, I mean, a computer was like the new thing. You know, you could go to, you, you could look at the magazine or a television ad and see a computer or like a store and it's just like magic. What does this do? How does this work? Um, and then Gen Z comes in where it's put in our lap. Uh, it's, of course, everybody has a computer, you know? It's not something that's that new. Um, so from there, you're going to have limited opportunities to introduce a, introduce a interest in technology because it's just not a new thing. So you'll see this, sorry, uh, you have the lucky entrance into technology. You're gonna have, basically, you're gonna get into technology through a family member, whether it's a grandparent or uncle mother, you know, that type of thing. And you can get guided that way. And, and so, I'm a little lost. Let me catch up real quick and then I'll get back to you. Get that one's done. Okay, I'm caught up, sorry. And then from there, you're, maybe we'll have somebody bring you into tech, you know? You'll have somebody in your life who maybe isn't a relative, just someone you meet in school who will say, hey, I see a potential in you. This is something that is really special. And then you get the really rare kind of curiosity. It happens where someone just wants to know, about STEM and whatnot. And here is where I want to go and show basically what I was doing when I was a kid. This was my entrance through my family business, my parents' family business and whatnot. Uh, I'm not saying this is what should be in schools to bring people in, but just similar things so that you get a differentium differentiation between software, hardware, or just basic circuitry.
And here is the good stuff. Uh, I have been really, really happy to have had as many conversations I've had, but here. But the main thing is pe meeting people who understand my goals and ambitions and connect with that. And also meeting people who are already anchored into their career. You know, people who have the same drive to bring green energy and make it normal, you know, the everyday thing. Where, where I'm from, um, it's, it's kind of a small, small town, you know, and meeting everyone here, it's, it's brought so many like minds and I have had a really, I've been really lucky to meet so many people that are so understanding, you know, um, A really big point I want to make is the fact that at my school, you know, I go to my STEM classes and I'll be the only woman in the room. And so going here and meeting so many strong, passionate and successful women in STEM has really been a beautiful thing for me. This is, there's a bit of a story to this slide. Uh, so I packed my professional clothes and whatnot and I got here and I dressed nice and I started talking to people. And I met Fergus here. He's a member of the program committee. And I start speaking to him and he tells me, you need some business cards. You know, I came unprepared with business card, without any business cards. And I go down a couple floors and I go to FedEx and I, and I, whip up these cards real quick and so I've now been able to hand them out and talk to people and whatnot and that's been really great. With that I've been able to connect people with like minds and green energy and whatnot. I've also been able to m meet people who are needing people in my field of study you know, um, I didn't really understand how networking is intertwined with engineering at first. So electrical engineering, you need your servers to be efficient. You need the hardware to be efficient. You need the software to be efficient, all that good stuff. And so along with that is meeting people who are interested in what I'm doing. You know, meeting people who want to know what I plan to do and want to know what my next steps are. And with that specifically, it's brought a real confidence to what I am studying. And before I had hesitant feelings, you know, because it's like, again, being the only woman in the room things like that, and also how am I going to integrate electrical engineering into networking. Um, but having seen the beauty in all these people and all their pieces of a puzzle and it all working together so beautifully is really, really uh, removed any doubt whatsoever in my mind. First of all, being able to speak here is a wonderful opportunity. I really appreciate you listening, even if it's a little shaky. Um, and along with that, networking personally, meeting people who I otherwise would not have had the opportunity to, you know, uh, it's really meant a lot to me. And then also the opportunity for career advancement has been really shocking. I would not have anticipated that until maybe a few years after my degree was completed or maybe even if I had to start a master's, you know. And then also having the opportunity to continue being a part of Nanog 
and it, it's all really, really lovely. And I've appreciated it a lot. So with that, thank you so much for your time. I apologize for it being shaky at first, but it means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Moira, it takes a lot of guts at 18 years old to be up there and open up this much. I was 18 thousands of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I had zero clue what I wanted to be. One thing I knew was that, you know, if you follow your dreams, if you follow your passion, you are at the right room to achieve them. Good luck with everything. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate your comments. Most of my career, I was the only woman in the room. It worked. John Brown, because I can say this on behalf of Team Comrie, um, courage. You have a lot of that. You will be a good leader. Move forward. Sorry. I have daughters, so I'm supportive of your uh, efforts. You're making me a syrup um, All of us in this room that are gray beards, and those of us that haven't matured yet to having a beard, work on it, I understand. All of us in this room, we have a duty and an obligation to support the next generation, to work with them, to give them the opportunity, to give them the challenges. Please make time to do that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, what he said made me tear up. That was beautiful. It's true. I have an 18 year old in college. You did great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone.